Sometimes the glass is half empty. Sometimes the glass is half full, right? You've heard that old saying, sometimes the glass is half empty. Sometimes the glass is half full. Well, that's pretty much my philosophy of life. You're born, you live, you die. Somewhere along the line, the glass is going to be empty. Somewhere along the line, the glass is going to be full. Empty, full, empty, full, empty, full, empty, full, empty, full, empty, full. I remember when I was a baby, the glass was pretty much on the empty side in those days. I was small, I was really little, I was about this big, weighed about seven pounds. I was naked, I was bald, I was crying. <laughs> Life was full of challenges in those days. Learn to walk, learn to talk, tie your shoes, wipe your ass, use a spoon, you know, it was like one thing after the next thing after the next thing after the next, you know. <sighs> I mean, I was a little baby, they just cut me no slack. <laughs> the, next, the next thing is like, it's, it's, it's like get out of the house, right? Go to kindergarten, go to high school, go to college. It's the same for everybody, right? Learn to drive, find a love, find a place to live. I mean, it is exhausting, man. But then what happens? Let me tell you what happens. Is one day you find yourself in a store and you're buying a TV set. And all of a sudden you realize, <laughs> you have grown up, you're an adult now, and life is beautiful, and finally, the glass is half full. Here's your TV, now go home and watch it. <sighs> but then you have to make it in life. But if you're lucky, you have a little luck, you have a modicum of success, you get to do all these adult things. You get to have a credit card. Here's your credit card. Get to go on vacation getaways. Get to have a barbecue once in a while. You can buy a bigger TV set with a remote control so you have a little power in your life finally. <laughs> get to be condescending to people who are younger than you. You get to, to join the Publishers Clearinghouse Contest and you can subscribe to lots and lots of stuff that you have absolutely no use for. But you might win. So it puts a little hope in your life. But what you really end up with are stacks and stacks of glossy magazines lying around your place that you never ever look at, but they do have these little perfume squares in them that you can tear open and sniff the sweet smell of success and at the same time remain absolutely frustrated. <laughs> anyway, you go on like this. You go on for a while, 25, maybe 30 years. <laughs> And all of a sudden, one day, you walk in the bathroom and you look in the mirror. And all of a sudden, you realize, wow, my hair is starting to thin. And my stomach's not as flat as it used to be. And my dick isn't as hard as it was. <laughs> and you know what? From that moment on, for the rest of your life, the only thing you're ever going to really be able to think about is that your hair is thinning and your stomach is flatting and your dick isn't hard. And after that, it just kind of gets worse. You know, it just goes downhill from there. It gets worse and worse and worse until you, find, you finally end up mindless and drooling, babbling, sitting in a wheelchair somewhere in some rat trap of a senior citizen's home by the interstate highway where the highlight of your day is waiting for them to serve you the strained peaches. So there you are. There you are sitting in your wheelchair and you're strapped in so you don't fall out. <laughs> you're listening to the cars go by on the highway, maybe you're counting the cars. 2001, 2002, 2009. <laughs> you wait for the attendant to bring you your lunch, which you don't really like, but you do like those strained peaches. And finally the moment arrives, the big moment, and that first piece of strained peach washes over your dry, old, cracked tongue. <laughs> and for a few seconds, for that one brief shining moment, life's beautiful again. And everything's great. The sun comes out and the glass is half full. But then, of course, you start choking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and drooling because you don't have any teeth anymore and you're not that good at swallowing. And so the attendant starts screaming in your one good ear, come on, that's no attitude to have, try harder. And you shit yourself for the fourth time that day. <laughs> And your mind starts to wrap around one singular idea, that is if your mind can wrap around anything at all at this point, and that is, does Dr. Kevorkian work in this place? Get me Dr. Kevorkian! 
But anyway, that's all in my future. I'm really very happy right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, my life is pretty good right now. It's just the thing is, you know, here's the thing, is that the, it can be a beautiful day. A really beautiful day like today, and you walk outside and the sky's blue, and the birds are singing, and everything's perfect. And you're thinking, wow, this is great. But you know, deep inside, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. It isn't. Because as you're reminded every day in the newspapers, and every, every evening on the news, no matter how good you think things are, somewhere in the world, right this minute, on this fragile blue planet, somewhere, somebody is suffering like you wouldn't fucking believe. I mean, you could be standing there with your, with your four-year-old holding hands and looking up at the sky, and it's beautiful, but it's not. It's not, because somewhere in Africa, there's a whole sea of starving people. There's this field of human skeletons just rotting to death. You know, when some African guy walks outside and the sky's just as beautiful, the same birds are singing, and he's holding his kid's hand, and he looks down at his kid's bony little head and his ribby little rib cage and his bulging belly, and his big brown eyes covered with death flies. And what do you think that guy thinks? Do you think he's thinking, oh, well, someday the glass is half empty, someday the glass is half full? I don't think so. Starving Africans. Starving Africans, starving Africans, starving Africans, starving Africans. Yeah, and they ruin everything. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. I mean, I feel for them. I do. I try to help them. I send them money. I do. But it's just that I can't fix them, you know? I can't fix them. I don't even know where they are, really. Do you know where they are? <laughs> I don't know where they are. You don't know where they are. I'll tell you where they are. They're on my TV set every night at 6.30 on Channel 2. I mean, it's depressing. It's confusing. And you know what I do when I get depressed and confused? I go for a drive in my car. I do, I go for a drive, and I drive to the supermarket. I do, I don't know why, I guess it's the environment, you know, I like it, it's bright, it's clean, it's cheery, it's organized, it's air conditioned. You know, I mean, even the name says it all, it's a supermarket, it's like we're Superman shops, you know? And that's how I feel when I'm flying down the aisle, pushing my cart, my cape's unfurled behind me, and I, you know, I grab that bottle of mineral water made from a melting glacier, and I put it in my cart, hey, only five bucks a quart, that's not bad. They have mesquite-flavored charcoal bits. They have double-A alkaline batteries for the kids' toys. They have Jamaican blue coffee made by some blue Jamaican, I guess. <laughs> they have strained peaches. I should stock up on those. You never know I'm going to need those. When my cart is full, my cart is full, I push it to the checkout counter. And this is where my right to exist in this environment is affirmed. Because this stuff is expensive, you know? But I have the money. I have the cash. So as I push my card up to the checkout girl, and I'm handing her my cash, it's almost a sexual transaction, you know? I just want to say to her, hey, there it is. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm walking with my bags of groceries out to the parking lot, to my freshly detailed and waxed automobile, I'm not confused anymore. I'm not depressed anymore. I feel happy, I'm serene, life is beautiful. You know why? Because I feel like I deserve this good life. And I'll tell you why. Because I work hard. I mean, I, do, I work hard, all the time, I work hard. I work hard for my wife, I work hard for my kids, I work hard at my job, I work out hard at the gym. I mean, I make an effort, man. I do, I, I, I wear sunblock when the sun is out, I floss my teeth every day, I recycle. <laughs> I mean, I'm a good guy. I'm a team player. I follow the rules, right? I, I pay the charge cards on time. I change my oil every 3,000 miles. I, I don't drink when I drive. No binging, no drug taking, no wife swapping. You know, no 4 o'clock in the morning, one more shot of vodka drinking, no running, no spitting, no laughing, no dancing, no crying, no yelling. No, 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 no. That's my life. Just say no. That's my life. Okay? Because let's face it. You're either on the bus or you're not on the bus, right? You've got to know the rules. That's the point. You have to follow the rules. Okay? Don't shoot up. Don't drop out. Don't, uh, don't go binging. Don't go down on strange pussy. And whatever you do, whatever you do, wear a condom on everything. Wear a condom on your fingers, on your head, on your tongue, on your ears, on your rectum, on your brain, on your heart, on your anus, on your mind. Don't forget your social security card number. Don't disappear. Don't hitchhike down Highway 61. Don't go to India for a year. Don't, 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 don't quit your job because you may wake up and find that the bus has left without you. And what do I get? 
for all this good behavior. What do I get? I get a, I, I get a, I get a brand new car. And I get a, a factory installed mobile phone, Bluetooth, and I can talk on the phone while I drive and it makes me feel good. I feel like I belong. I feel like the world is right. You know, I can babble it along on my phone and pull up at a stoplight and I'm talking for $3 a minute, but then of course I look over and there's some homeless guy and he is fishing bottles out of the dumpster at five cents a piece. But you know what? That's okay too. It's okay because I'm doing the best I can, right? And this guy, this guy's doing the best he can too. That's the point. And I want to roll down my window and give him a buck and say, hey buddy, I'm on your side. I'm with you there. When the revolution comes, man, I am with you. Because that's the truth. That's the kind of guy I am. I, I, I am. I'm a good guy. You know, I give money to all the charities. I do. I got the ribbons to prove it. I got red, blue, pink, green, yellow. I wear them all the time. <laughs> I lick stamps down at the committee headquarters. I got, I got the coffee cups. I got the tote bags. I got the t-shirts. I got everything to prove my commitment. I read the paper every morning. I watch the news every night, CNN all day long. I mean, it's relentless, man. The news is relentless. There is bad news everywhere. People are in pain. A lot of people in pain on the news. You know, and I feel that pain. That's the thing. I feel the pain. Show me your pain. Show me your pain, and I feel for you. I'm serious. And because I care, because I'm concerned, I feel like not only is my glass half full, I feel like it's overflowing because it's a glass of life, and it's filled with love. You know what I'm saying? And I am filled with love. That's who I am. I'm filled with love. I love everybody. I do. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love all of you people here tonight. Thank you for coming. I love everybody in the world. I love people in Africa, people in Asia, South America, Israel. It's difficult, but I try. <laughs> Haiti. I love everybody. And if they were all here right now, I'd give them one big group hug. You know? My glass is the glass of life, and it is filled with love. And I drink love from the glass of life, and it washes down my tongue, and it goes down my throat, and it goes into my body, and it feeds my soul. And so I drink it, and I drink it, and I drink it, and I drink it, and I drink it till my bladder gets full, and then I have to pee. And then when I pee, I pee love. <laughs> so I'm drinking love, and I'm peeing love, and, and all of a sudden the guy from the dumpster comes over with an empty bottle and says, hey, dude, I need some help. So I pee in his bottle. I go, hey, it's love. <laughs> and then the guy from Zaire shows up with an empty can, and he needs help. So the guy from the dumpster pees in his can, and then some guy from the slums in Rio shows up and says, help me, and he pees on him, and then we're all peeing, and we're all laughing, we're all drinking, and we're all peeing, and it's all love. And let me tell you something, that is what makes the world go round. I mean, I'm doing the best I can. You know, I mean, in a hundred years, I'll just be a, I'll just be a bunch of bones in a box. So will you. So will the guy in the dumpster. So what does it matter what I do with my puny little life anyway, right? But let me say one more thing, and I really mean this. While I was here, while I was on this earth, I lived. And I loved. I cared and I was concerned. And you know something? That's what I think is important. I am concerned.